So, vertebrae chordates. Obviously, we know they have four characteristics. What are they? Just say them. Notochord, uh, dorsal hollow nerve cord, tail, laryngeal slits. But these are different from inverts because they also are going to develop a backbone, which are most chordates. Most chordates develop a backbone. They also have a skull. So you could already see uh, more of a complex system form from our inverts and our invertebrate chordates. The first three classes. In the phylum chordata, which has a super subphylum vertebrata, and you don't have to know that, okay, are all fish. So the first three classes of chordates are fish. That's how you have to know. My first fish is called Mixini. And these are going to be a little bit of uh, strange names like our invertebrate chordates. Uh, that's just the way it is. They are referenced as jawless fish. So they're fish. They have the four characteristics of chordates, they have a backbone, but they don't have a jaw, okay? Then you've got chondrichthys. Think of C for chondrichthys, C for cartilage. They have skeletons made up of cartilage. You have that too, but you also have bones. So the last fish is osteichthys. And has anybody ever seen that O word or reference it with something? Osteoporosis, which is a, a disease involving your bones. Well, these are bony fish. So my jawless fish, and you see the shape that they could form. All you have to know is a lamprey is an example of a jawless fish. What do we call jawless fish? Mixini. So examples of Mixini are lampreys and they're jawless fish. There's another close-up picture. There, that's their mouth. No. Now, that's a terrible picture. I really need to update these notes. A hagfish is also another example of a mixini. Okay? So all you have to know, mixini are jawless fish, and examples of them are sea uh, lamprey and a hagfish. Lamprey and hagfish. My sharks and rays are my chondrichthys, and they have movable joints that are made up of cartilage and those are just some pictures so that says movable joints made up of cartilage because that's missing from the screenshot all right so bony fish are every other fish that i don't name if i don't say lamprey had fish shark or ray the answer is bony fish end of story so let's talk a little bit about them you didn't have to take a picture of that. It's just a picture. No. So, oh, and here's some examples. Your typical goldfish, a tuna. This is the fish we're going to dissect. It's not a turpin, it's a perch. And anybody know what that is? Salmon. Aha. Uh -huh. He's obviously a fisherman. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the respiratory of fish, which is a unique uh, system that fish represent. Um, is this? No, every fish besides lamprey, hagfish, shark, and ray is a bony fish. I just gave you some examples. No, but is this the respiratory fish respiratory system of most fish, which are bony fish? Okay, so our main focus is bony fish. Bless you. So there is a structure called an operculum, and it is a bony covering that um, forms on each side of the gills. So it's like the gill protector, let's say. Okay, you're gonna be able to see that when you dissect the fish. And here's a picture. These are fish that are color coded. When you buy uh, fish for dissections, you can buy them with color coats. And the green would be the operculum and underneath you can see the gills. And our fish do not look like that because those are bloody, ours are clean. You already saw the other, okay? Now, another major structure of the respiratory system is the pharynx, okay? And we're going to talk more about the pharynx when we get into our other organisms. The mouth is a major structure of uh, the fish. Water is sucked in and out throughout the process, and the water is what gives the fish the gas that they need in order to breathe. So it's involved in the gas exchange. I want you to underline the word gills, too, because they are also a major part of the uh, respiratory system. I'm going to talk about it in the next slide. So you have a perculum. Gills, pharynx, and mouth. So here is 
the process, okay? And I know you've seen this process, you just don't realize. The operculum closes. You can say Matthew and Hampton. So the operculum closes, it's on the side of the gills, and the mouth opens. What do you think is going to happen next? The water. water is sucked in, okay? Then what is going to happen? Oxygen is going to be taken out from the water. By what? The gills are going to exchange the gases, and then what's going to happen? Close its mouth and what? Good. It closes its mouth, a perculum opens, and water gets pushed out. 